I kept a list of words according to their shape and texture. Words round as a three, gobble, cupboard, cabbage, pointy as a four, jacket, wife, quick, shimmering as a five, kingdom, shoemaker, surrounded. Numbers felt like my first language in a way that English never did. English felt to me like a foreign language. And so being able to recite these uh, numbers like a poem composed in numbers or a story composed in numbers uh, was for me a way of expressing myself, communicating with other people and realising for the first time that I had a gift for communication which is paradoxical because uh, I'm also on the autistic spectrum. I was born with what we call high-functioning autism today and often people on that spectrum, even on the highest end, find language difficult. It was my case growing up, but it's something that I've learned to, to master. He may have started with numbers, but Daniel Tammet also has an intense relationship with words. He speaks several languages, and his new book is part travelogue, part meditation, on the subject of how we communicate in all its variety. Ljósmóði is an Icelandic word. It's one of my favourite words. It means uh, midwife, but it literally means light mother. And this is, of course, the first, uh, what, 10, 12 digits of pi. My language, the language of numbers, which I used and understood as a child. It's a private language. Of course, nobody understands it apart from me. How many places did you manage to get to with this? 22,514. How did you do that? When someone born in England or France or Germany sees calligraphy, sees Chinese uh, ideograms, they don't, it's, it squiggles on the page, it doesn't mean anything, and to have them memorise it would be impossible. Well, numbers for me, they're not squiggles on the page, they have shapes, they have colours, they have textures, they have meanings, and these meanings are intuitive, but they're, they're so full of poetry. In my mind, each number had a shape complete with colour and texture, and occasionally motion, a neurological phenomenon that scientists call synesthesia, and each shape a meaning. The meaning could be pictographic. 89, for instance, was dark blue, the colour of a sky, threatening storm. You are looking at or reaching some tentative conclusions about the changing relationship between the written and the spoken word yes. in this age of yes. digital communication. Can you tell us about that? I think what's fascinating is that language is merging in a way that perhaps linguists hadn't expected even 50 or 30 years ago. We're seeing with uh, computers now and people writing more and more online that they're using spoken, essentially spoken language, but in a way that is written. Uh, they're using the same abbreviations, the same slang, the same uh, expressions that we wouldn't have seen written in the past. And it's changing our relationship to language. It's, it's, uh, there are people who say, you know, it's a form of dumbing down or it's, you know, standards are dropping. I, I'm more optimistic. Talking about autism, what would you say to parents or young people who are um, faced with this condition and are perplexed about it, concerned about it? I think autism does bring benefits. I think there have been wonderful poets and I'm sure that there are many writers in the past, maybe Nabokov, I suspect, was on the spectrum, and Lewis Carroll, and I know there have been doctors who suggest he was likely on the spectrum. So we know that there is this fantastic potential and what the barrier is, in part, is society. That society, up until very recently, did not realise that people on the autistic spectrum had creativity and could create. They assumed that people could memorise, they could be like machines, in a way, robots, calculators, but not writers, not artists, not sculptors. One day, intent on my reading, I happened on lollipop and a shock of joy coursed through me. I read it as 1011 epop and I thought it the most beautiful thing I had yet read. Half number 
and half word.